Hey guys, what's going on? It's Marcus Gabber Backpacking. Thanks for joining me today. So today I'm sitting here and I have the little alcohol stove, the little kind of replica of the Mini Atomic from Mini Bull Design that a couple people have asked me how I built it. And so that's what we're gonna do today. We're going to build one of these so that you can see exactly how it goes together and how, what you need, what it takes, and how to do it for yourself so you can build one of these and use it on your own. So let's go. So let's take a look at what it takes to build this. What tools, what equipment, and what materials do you need in order to put one of these together? Okay, this is what I have used to build mine. So I've got two of the small 6.5 ounce Starbucks cans. It's the espresso and cream. I've got some scotch tape, some super glue, a Sharpie, a push pin, a, a metal, sheet metal screw uh, with a button head, a knife, some fiberglass wicking, a small finishing nail, a pair of scissors, and a small strip of paper that's long enough to go around one of the cans. So that's what I use right there to build this. All right, so now that we've got the supplies, what it is we need to put this thing together, let's take a look at the first couple of steps of building the Mini Atomic. So I've got my two cans here and so you need the bottoms of both cans as you can see you have a sealed bottom and then you have the bottom with the burners on the inside of this rim and then the fill hole right here so this is what we need to make first is this piece so what you want to do is you want to cut two cans about the same height and the height is going to be a little bit less than what this is and a great tool for that is one I've already got out which is my scotch tape holder. So if I take my sharpie, take the top off, and you can see here I just set it on there. That actually is just about the perfect height. I'm actually going to cut a little bit below that line. I'm going to use this can and I'm going to just spin the can around, set it flat on the table, spin it around, and that creates that line. I'm going to do the same thing on this can. Now this can already had some lines on here because I was going to use it for a different spagaver stove, but since we're doing this, I already had it sitting here, let's use it. So I'm going to go ahead, get these things going. What I like to do is use a knife, pierce the can, kind of cut it most of the way around, and then go in with the scissors, finish off the cutting, and then do the clean line. So let's take a look. That easy. Two, same height. Now after you've cut the cans, you may have a little bit of residue because these things are a little bit dirty inside. So it's easy, just once you get them cut, go throw them in some hot water for a little bit, throw a little bit of detergent in there. It'll come out pretty easy with a little bit of a brush. So I'm gonna go do that, I'm gonna go clean these up, and then we'll continue on. Okay, so I have the inside of these nice and clean. So now what I'm gonna do is, actually the, the two kind of mate together. And if you've ever tried putting two of these cans together, they're the same size, so it's really hard. Now I've seen people do like uh, little scores around the side so that they can flare it out and put it over. And what I've actually seen that do from time to time is actually create a, a little bit of a seam that can split. And so what I do is a little bit different, but to get this one over the top of this one, 
I take either the pen cap, the Sharpie cap, or the handle of the knife, and I just kind of work it around to kind of stretch it out just a little bit. So I'm gonna go do this and keep making some attempts to, uh, to put this on, and we'll come back once I get it fitted together. Okay, so it took a little bit of work, but I've got it together. Uh, I've got it about half of the way pushed together. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and push down and bottom the two cans out inside of each other. And that is what you end up with. So now you've got pretty much a double-ended can. You can see on this, which will be the bottom side where I rolled the lip just a little bit in order to get the other side in. So now that I've got this together, the next thing to do is to put the burner holes in. With the burner holes, there's 12 of them, and I want them evenly spaced. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take this little strip of paper, wrap it around the can till it's on itself, grab a small piece of tape, tape that together, take it off, just kind of fold this over so that it isn't going to be a problem. So now I've got a loop that's the same circumference and diameter as my cans. So I'm going to fold it in half and that gives me two of my burn hole marks. Then I'm going to fold it into thirds. So I want it to be pretty even third, so I'll play with it till they about line up. And then pinch that. So that gives you the first six. And then if you fold that in half one more time and squeeze that, that gives you the 12. And if you look, the width of this is just about exactly the width of the holes on the one that I've already put together. So now I'll take this, unfold it, slide it back over the stove that I'm making, take my Sharpie, and everywhere that there is a bend, I will put a little mark on the inside, and that is where the burner holes are going to be. So I'll just go around, mark all of these, Okay, so I've got them all marked there. So to make the burner holes, I use this little push pin. Now the thing with that is you don't want to push too hard because of the angle that you're going at. You can see it would come right out through the side. So what you want to do is be careful and just push it through. You want it to the full depth, the full width of the pin shaft, but you don't want to push it all the way through. And so it's pretty easy. You just kind of Get it there, kind of twist it a little bit, get it in, and then pull it out. So I'm gonna do that all the way around, and then we'll do the next step. All right guys, so here's the deal. I've already got one made out of Starbucks cans. So I went ahead and I started over with one made out of Dr. Pepper cans. So this one's a little bit bigger, as you can see here. A little bit bigger, but it's also, I made it just exactly the same height but there's less wall height out here so I won't have to wrap it quite as much with the fiberglass wicking. Now I already went ahead and put all of the burner holes in there so those are all ready to go right there. Next I'm going to use this nail. I'm actually going to use the uh, the push pin first, put a hole right in the center, use the nail, make it a little bit bigger, and then make it big enough for my sheet metal screw with the button head. Now that's gonna be the fill hole, so poke that hole, get the nail, 
work that in there. You don't want to go too deep in. There you go. And then that's going to be about the right size. So it may it may take a little bit of work to get this in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get a screwdriver right now. I'm going to go get a screwdriver and screw this in there now that it's started. And that's going to be the fill hole. So let me go do that. Okay, so because this screw won't work, it's too deep in there, I went ahead and got one of my drill bits and actually drilled it out a little bit and I found a very short button head that has a nice wide button to it and drilled it out so that that fits in there nicely. It's still, uh, the, the difference with this one though is that it is fine thread so it takes a little bit longer to get in there but it's got a wider head so it actually makes a little bit better seal in there and so now I've got my fill hole and the fill port right there I've got my fill port right there and I've got all the burners done really the only thing left to do is to install the fiberglass wicking so let me show you how that's done okay to do the fiberglass wicking I like to have a pretty good tight end there and then I'm going to lay it across like that. So to get it to stay there, what you need is a little line of super glue. So there's lots of straight lines on here. So I'm just gonna pick one and put a little line of super glue, set that off to the side. And then I want it going towards the top. So I'm gonna set it on here just like this and just let it sit for few seconds and it will eventually lock on there and be ready to go. So right now it's it's on there pretty good. I'm just gonna put a little another little dab down here on the bottom because it didn't stick all that well down there. And let that sit for just another another minute okay so now that it's on there what I can do is begin to wrap it around and because of the the smaller size on this uh, as far as height goes it's going to be a little bit tricky to keep it on there but I want to keep it kind of tight and just rolling it right next to the line right above it and just keep that going and I think for this one I probably want five to six wraps uh, at least six I'd say six to seven actually now that I'm looking at it so here comes number five yeah I think six is gonna be pretty good so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a spot and I'm going to just leave a little bit of a gap. I know that I'm not going to need too much more, so I'm going to cut that off. And leave that gap there. Come back around. I'm going to come up through that. And then pull it tight to kind of lock it in there. Pull again. Now I'm just going to kind of maneuver this down a little bit because I want it down a little on here. I've got one little spot where it flipped over, so just line it all up. It's where I want it right now, so what I'm going to do now is all the way around the top, I'm going to put a bead of super glue and that will lock it in place along the top so that it doesn't come up all the way. I'm going to let that sit for a minute so that it can dry a bit. Then I'll flip it over. Where this lock came in, I'm going to put a good bead under here and then across to lay this one down in. Okay, So that it can just lay in there like that. I'm going to take a bead all the way around the bottom to 
to lock that in. Again, the spot where it started. Back around. Find the cap for this. It must be over here. Mm, oh, there it is. Cap back on there. And then once this thing is completely dry, you can trim up some of these loose ends a little bit. A little bit tough right now but uh there you go it is now wrapped all the way around with the flat fiberglass wicking and we pretty much have a finished stove so we should probably fill this thing up and make sure it works okay you light it and the wick around the side with the fuel ignites heats up and vaporizes the fuel inside and in a second you will start to see the burner holes actually start to ignite and the flames will be coming out of those. Now you can see it's switching over from the wick to the burners. I'm going to adjust the camera so that you can see the height of those flames. There we go, the wick is pretty much out. There we go. And you can see it is burning a nice blue flame out of the burners. And this is a very, very good stove. I really like using this kind of stove. And now I've got one that's the six and a half ounce can size and a 12 ounce size. I didn't put a whole lot of fuel in here so it's going to burn out quickly. Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. And I really wanted to show you guys how I built my mini atomic. So I started out building another mini atomic and I actually had some problems with it. Plus, I already have a mini atomic, so I decided to build an atomic. So this one's out of the 12 ounce cans. You could also do it out of something like a Red Bull can, which is a little bit bigger than the Starbucks cans that I used for my other one. But now I have a full size one and the smaller one. Both have the wicking on them. Both work really well. Put out a very intense hot flame. I really like the way these things work and I'm going to continue using mine. Paired with the Caldera Cone, it is an awesome stove. Now, a lot of people won't call them stoves, they'll call them burners, and the reason is you can't set a, a pot directly on top, and therefore, they don't consider it a stove. It's just a burner. So, you need something that you can put it all together with. The Caldera Cone works great for that. So, here it is, guys. Hope you guys learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, reach out, as always, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys down the trail. Thanks.